Hi, this is Nick. Portfolio management at level one, in many respects, is the culmination of all your studies. It's the final stage of investing. We've done the accounting, the quants, the economics. We've applied those skills into valuing assets. And now we're putting it all together into a portfolio. I want to talk about three graphs. Don't have any slides with me, just going to use my hands to draw them because they all look the same. The capital allocation line or CAL, the capital market line or CML, and the security market line or SML. These cause confusion. They all look a bit like this. There's your y-axis going up, which is your expected return or your required return. Your x-axis coming out, which is some measure of risk. And a line sloping upwards, which intersects at the risk-free rate. Let's first of all talk about the capital allocation line and the capital market line. The CAL and CML both look the same, as I said. Uh, we are measuring what rate of return we're expecting to get given a level of risk, and they both show where different investors invest. What's the difference between them? The CAL and the CML both come from an efficient frontier. Remember how this works. The CAL, you have a specific number of investments where you draw your frontier. You then drop the tangent, and that is where you get the set of investment points. In other words, your line is touching the risk-free on the y-axis and the relevant portfolio on the frontier. It can't be any higher because there's nowhere to invest. It can't be any lower because that's inefficient. So you've got the exact point where it touches the frontier. The difference between the CAL and the CML is the CAL has a limited number of investments, maybe even just one. You can draw a capital allocation line with a single with a single asset. The capital market line, you've got an unlimited number of investments. You've got the whole market portfolio, which is everything. Uh, remember that also the slope represents the sharp ratio, how much more return you get given an additional amount of risk that you've taken on. So what's the difference? If let's say we have two graphs, they look a bit like that, so very similar, but one's slightly higher than the other, which is the higher one? The answer is it's the capital market line because the CAL has limited number of investments. The CML has all those investments and a very, very large number more. And therefore, as you add more investments, the efficient frontier gets a little bit better, slightly less risk or slightly more return. And therefore, you're pushing the line slightly up. So if you're given a choice of two, uh, the higher line is going to be the capital market line. What about capital market line versus security market line? So uh, the capital market line, as we have described, you have got the set of points going from risk free down the bottom through the market portfolio and onwards. If we now borrow and gear up, that represents the set of points where every investor invests, assuming we are rational, which is a bit of a big ask, to be honest. Uh, we draw on our indifference curves. Remember how they work. If we are very risk averse, then they're very steep. If we're less risk averse, then they're less steep. They're less steep. And if we're therefore highly risk averse on our CML, we invest down near the bottom. If we're less risk averse, we're going to be further up here. And that's kind of what you'd expect. If you're very risk averse, you're going to be mostly in government bonds, low expected return, but low volatility. If you're prepared to take a more risk, you may go to international securities, international equities, for example, but greater expected return uh, for that extra risk we're taking on. The security market line is very different. Remember, this time you're x-axis is on the beta. It tells you the beta, the systematic risk rather than the volatility. And the systematic risk is saying how much market volatility do we take on with each investment. And so what this, what the SML is telling us is how much return do we require for each level of systematic risk. It doesn't tell us where we invest. It tells us what return we require for taking on that risk. Uh, so that's really the difference between our three lines. The CML and the CAL say, where do we all invest, depending on our levels of risk aversion and our indifference curves? The SML says, how much return do we require for a specific level of systematic risk? And then we can compare the expected return on a particular investment to the required return that the SML tells us, and it tells us whether we have a good or bad investment. Please don't confuse those lines. Uh, if you understand those three, uh, those three graphs, what the axes are, what they're trying to tell us, it'll make a lot of your understanding of portfolio management much easier.